Hello, and welcome back to our channel. We decided to dig into the topic of malnutrition because it is all-encompassing when we look at our overall health. There are indicators of malnutrition that we should all look out for. Did you know there is a tool that hospitals can use to test you for malnutrition? Watch to the end to discover the key points and unrecognized risks, and now, even how you can test from home with no needles. The product is in a link below. Now, did you know that there are four types of malnutrition? We did not, but according to the Cleveland Clinic, malnutrition can mean undernutrition or overnutrition and an imbalance of macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, fats, or micronutrients, vitamins and minerals. Let's break those down. Macronutrient undernutrition is up first, also called protein energy undernutrition. This is a deficiency of macronutrients, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. Macronutrients are the main building blocks of your diet, the nutrients that your body relies on to produce energy to maintain itself. Without them, or even just one of them, your body soon begins to fall apart, breaking down tissues and shutting down non-essential functions to conserve its low energy. Next is micronutrient undernutrition. Micronutrients are vitamins and minerals. Your body needs these in smaller amounts, but it does need them for all types of functions. Many people are mildly deficient in certain vitamins and minerals from a lack of variety in their diet. You might not notice a mild vitamin deficiency affecting you, but as micronutrient undernutrition becomes more severe, it can begin to have serious and lasting effects. Macronutrient overnutrition, on the other hand, is when your body has an excess of protein, carbohydrate, and or fat calories to use, it stores them away as fat cells in your adipose tissue. But when your body runs out of tissue for storage, the fat cells themselves have to grow. Enlarged fat cells are associated with chronic inflammation and with a host of metabolic disorders that follow. These can lead to NCDs, such as diabetes, mellitus, coronary artery disease, and stroke. And lastly, micronutrient overnutrition, which is very dangerous too. You can actually overdose on vitamin and mineral supplements. More research is needed to explain how this happens and how much is too much of a certain vitamin or mineral. In general, micronutrient overnutrition is uncommon and doesn't occur from diet alone. But if you take mega doses of supplements, it can have toxic effects. It's a good idea to check with your healthcare provider first. Let's talk about how we treat undernutrition with nutritional supplements. This might mean individual micronutrients, or it might mean refeeding with a custom, high-calorie nutritional formula designed to restore everything your body is missing. Severe undernutrition can take weeks to correct, but can be dangerous, especially in the first few days. Your body changes in many ways to adapt to undernutrition. Refeeding asks it to change back to its old way of operating, and sometimes that change is more than it's prepared to handle. It's best to begin under close medical observation to prevent and manage the complications of refeeding syndrome, which can be serious and even life-threatening. And now, how do we treat overnutrition? This is generally treated with weight loss, diet, and lifestyle changes. Losing extra weight can help reduce your risk of developing secondary conditions such as diabetes and heart disease. Weight loss treatment may include diet and exercise plans, medications, or medical procedures. You may also need to treat an underlying condition such as thyroid disease or a mental health disorder. Weight loss can be rapid or it can be long and gradual, depending on the path you take. But after you lose weight, it's the lifestyle changes you stick with that will help keep it off. This may involve long-term support systems such as counseling, behavioral therapy, support groups, and education in nutrition. Malnutrition is a global problem. In both the developed world and the developing world, poverty and a lack of understanding of nutrition are the leading causes. We can help control the disease of malnutrition with better worldwide education and support for the disadvantaged including access to clean water, nutritious whole foods, and medicine. 
Children and elders who may not be able to advocate for themselves are especially at risk and may need closer attention paid to their diet and health condition. The best way to prevent malnutrition is to eat a well-balanced diet with a variety of nutritious whole foods in it. If you have enough of all the nutrients your body needs, you will be less likely to overeat, trying to satisfy those needs. Some micronutrient deficiencies are common even with a fairly standard diet. A blood test is one way to find out if you could benefit from micronutrient supplements. Your healthcare provider can help you determine the correct dose to take. The symptoms of undernutrition can be as follows. Low body weight, prominent bones, depleted fat and muscle, thin arms and legs with edema, swelling with fluid, in your belly and face, stunted growth and intellectual development in children, weakness, faintness and fatigue, irritability, apathy or inattention, dry, inelastic skin, rashes and lesions, brittle hair, hair loss and hair pigment loss, frequent and severe infections, low body temperature, unable to get warm, low heart rate and blood pressure. The symptoms of overnutrition can be as follows. Obesity, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, heart disease. The main causes of malnutrition may not be obvious or complicated. You might have trouble getting enough nutrients if you have limited financial resources, limited access to nutritious foods, medical conditions that make eating difficult, such as nausea or difficulty swallowing, medical conditions that deplete calories, such as chronic diarrhea or cancer, an extra need for calories, such as during pregnancy, breastfeeding or childhood, mental health conditions that discourage eating, such as depression or dementia, eating disorders such as anorexia and bulimia, malabsorption disorders such as pancreatic insufficiency or inflammatory bowel disease, a condition that requires long-term intravenous feeding, a very restricted diet or an unappealing diet chosen by someone else. However, overnutrition is caused by consuming more nutrients than you need. You might do this if you have few nutritious food options, a sedentary lifestyle, a condition that slows down your metabolism, such as hypothyroidism, a hormone imbalance that interferes with your hunger and fullness signals, chronic stress, anxiety or depression, binge eating disorder, chronic overuse of dietary supplements. Key points to consider regarding malnutrition. Malnutrition is a common, under-recognized and under-treated condition in hospital patients. Disease-related malnutrition arises due to reduced dietary intake, malabsorption, increased nutrient losses, or altered metabolic demands. Wide-ranging changes in physiological function occur in malnourished patients leading to increased rates of morbidity and mortality. Routine nutritional screening should be undertaken in all patients admitted to a hospital using a validated tool such as the Malnutrition Universal Screening Tool. Healthcare costs are significantly increased in malnourished patients. Wow, that was a lot of information, but worth the time. Thank you for staying this long and helping us spread the message. Don't forget to check the link below and actually find out what you might be deficient in for under $100 on Amazon.